Hello everyone, I'm Evan Hammonds for Bloodhorse.com and welcome to After the Wire, brought to you as always by EquaAid, the makers of Bodybuilder, Air Blast, and other fine natural products. The Arlington Million, man, what a story. It's a tale a screenwriter would shop all over Hollywood and probably get turned down because it was too far-fetched. In real life, however, it's the kind of stuff that makes thoroughbred racing the best game on the planet. You just can't make this stuff up. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about, read the story on bloodhorse.com or the print edition that will be in your mailbox later this week. In the race itself, only seven went in Arlington Million 32, and it wasn't really the best cast ever assembled, mind you. But nobody, nobody wanted that early lead. Now, at first, Magician was at the front, but he was quick to cede the lead to side glance, and as everybody kind of tried to pack up, it can kind of explain why the opening quarter went in 25 flat and the half went in 49 and 2. It also explains why the entire cast was separated by no more than about five lengths all the way, all the way down the backstretch. Now, when the real running commenced on the turn, it was jockey Eurico da Silva on Up With The Birds, who was first to really get busy on his horse, but the Canadian runner was unable to make any headway while on the inside. Third choice, Smoking Sun, was sitting pretty, but he never fired after taking the wide way around the turn. The moderate tempo was of no help to the closers with the exception of Hardest Core and jockey Euryliad Vaz, who was riding it was like his 100th grade one start and not his first. Being a win and you're in race, it puts uh, Hardest Core on the path towards the Breeders' Cup turf which could lend a heartwarming story as we march towards Santa Anita and the Breeders' Cup World Championships. Also at Arlington, it wasn't a challenge race, but Adelaide was as advertised as the even money choice in the Secretariat. The son of Galileo dropped a photo in his U.S. debut in the Belmont Invitational Derby, but delivered at Arlington under jockey Ryan Moore, despite drifting and drifting and drifting out in the stretch. He got the win by one and a half lengths after being in the perfect spot throughout the early running of the race. At Saratoga, only four went off in the Knob Creek Lake Placid, a grade two $300,000 race for three-year-old fillies. And a star on the rise was winner Crown Queen, who is a half-sister to two-time champion Royal Delta. Expect no less than a grade one attempt next time around for this classy sophomore. Now, speaking of classy sophomores, Stop Charging Maria is one who's uh, really making headways this year. She's picked up the pace this summer and may even be able to mount a challenge to untappable at the top of the three-year-old Philly division. Her win in the Alabama earlier and earlier this meet in the CCA Oaks puts her right there. She also broke her maiden and was second in the spinaway last year at two, a true horse for the course at the spa. Now we'll have more from Saratoga next week with the Travers and all of the additional races they have there right here on After the Wire.